All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Darren Shaw, who is in Edmonton, Canada. How are you doing, Darren? Hey, I'm doing good, thanks. How are you? Yes, and Darren is the founder of WhiteSpark, uh, which nowadays looks a lot after. Um, SEO, local search rankings, local search ecosystems. And, uh, and, and what we're going to talk about today is a really interesting subject. And that is why businesses need to stop ignoring their Google business profile. So Darren, let's get straight into it, right? When people are setting up a business or, or whatever, or when they're, you know, some marketing people come in, they say, okay, here's the checklist. Got to get your Facebook up, got to get your LinkedIn company page up. Gotta do right. Oh yeah. Yeah. You Google business too. Yeah and throw that up and and then it kind of just sits there it seems like a lot of people just kind of forget about the google business listing or don't understand its importance uh, what say you yeah so that's exactly it i think that um if your business has been around for a little bit let's say you've been around for at least five to ten years then you have probably created your google listing you have a listing up there but you've ignored it since. And over the last five years, Google has made a ton of enhancements to the Google business profile dashboard. There's all kinds of amazing stuff that you could be taking advantage of in that dashboard, but most businesses are not doing it. Like there, you can have Google posts, which is like a Facebook post. So you can talk about your uh, specials and offers. The funny thing with posts is that so many businesses are paying for Google ads there's free advertising space right on your Google business profile if you just decided to take advantage of it. You can list your products, you can list your services, you can add photos, you can add videos, you can really make your listing stand out. And when you do that, you set yourself apart from the competition. It has a huge impact. So how do you how do you then um, you know help people who think um, they think, well, uh, Google business, that's just a kind of a local thing. It's not, you know, yeah. it's for, it's for small businesses, not really for me. And and that might be true to some degree. So let's say you're uh, an, an e-commerce company and you really only sell, like you sell nationally or globally, like you don't really care about how you rank in your local community. So in terms of ranking benefit, you know, rank, let's say you're a online retailer, you sell shoes. You know, shoe store in the city that your headquarters is in is is maybe like you don't even sell locally. People can't even come to your office. That if that's a, if that's your business type, then the play for your Google business profile is a branded search. So someone would search for the term like your specific brand, and that profile is kind of like your website on the internet. And so when you put mm -hmm. the effort into that profile, there is a benefit from a branded search perspective where. You know, people can learn about you. They can understand, you know, they can read your reviews. They can see photos. They can see the products. They can see uh, Google posts and specials. So that's where uh, if you're not a local business, that's where that profile becomes valuable. If you are a local business, then I probably don't need to tell you how important it is to get that profile mm -hmm. looking good and standing out from the competition. And and not just uh, I mean I guess that the more content as you said you put you put into it and I, uh, you know videos photographs posts and all of that uh, how much does that then help your I mean does that help with algorithms does that help with SEO does that are there are there other benefits to it um, beyond you know just um, having a more comprehensive profile yeah so if you're if you are a local business uh or let's even some like multi-location enterprise businesses they really care about ranking in those local packs um so if you care to rank in that local pack then the stuff that you do on your listing certainly has a big impact on your rankings and so the number one thing would be the primary category you set on the listing so you can define what category is your business you want to align that primary category as closely to the keyword you want to rank for as possible like whatever category is the closest match pick that one it's the most important ranking signal then the additional categories are really valuable too because when you add additional categories you're basically saying these are additional terms that my business should be eligible to rank for so that has a big ranking impact but then a lot of the other stuff actually doesn't impact rankings it's more of a conversion signal so um mm -hmm. there is a side benefit where if 
if you're getting lots of clicks and lots of engagement on your listing, it can have an impact on rankings. But um, the other stuff, like keywords in the description, keywords in your product section or services section, Google's not looking at that as a, as a ranking factor. So, mm-hmm. um, but in terms of an e- that e-commerce shoe store, for example, your Google business profile itself won't have a huge impact on your rankings in regular search. And then I guess there's the other part is is uh, engagement and reviews and and having uh, you know reviews and well I think this is another thing that uh, often businesses struggle with, especially uh, you know small and local businesses, is like they say oh uh, could you do me a review and then they're sort of uh, maybe on Yelp or or maybe on Google or or they're right. just they you know they there's about three or four maybe on Facebook, um, yep. so everything is a little random. With reviews, if you are that local business, your reviews on Google should be your top priority. Start there because they absolutely have a direct impact on your ability to rank in the local packs. So the more reviews you have, uh, generally the better you rank. There are thresholds at like 10, 100 reviews. Each time you pass one of those thresholds, you rank a little bit better. So it's really valuable to get reviews. Um, one of the problems with getting reviews on Google is where do you send the person? Like, you're like, Hey, can you leave me a review on Google? And then they're like, "Mm, okay. So you you kind of force them to have to find your business on Google. So we have this uh, free tool on our website. It's the Google review link generator. You can get it on whitespark.ca. You just enter your, start typing your business. It'll auto complete, find your business for you. And then, uh, generates a link for you is this nice short link called review this dot biz slash you can put in whatever you want as your short name. And then you also get, you'll get the link and a QR code. QR codes are really fun uh, way to encourage more reviews on your Google listing because you can put them on something like a business card and say, Hey, yeah, all you have to do is point your phone at this QR code and it'll take you straight to leave a review. So it's really smart that way. You can do something fun, like put it on a t-shirt and be like, Hey, leave us a review on Google. And it's got Mm -hmm. the QR code, just point your phone at my t-shirt. So, or, Mm -hmm. or in, in the office, you could have a little uh, sign up that says leave us a review on Google with a QR code. So those are some of the ways I would focus on Google first, uh, get your reviews with in line with the competition. Once you've got lots of reviews there and you're, you're like, I don't know, let's say you had double the reviews of your top competition, then you could start looking at some of the other sites that you might want to get reviews on. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think, and I think one of the things that uh, your know, business is still struggle with a little bit is um is the ask right i mean particularly if it's a if it's a local like face-to-face business i've seen this myself where you know you go you have a good experience everything is good and then you can see they're they're just you know they they kind of want to ask you for the review but they're kind of embarrassed almost to do this um yeah. and, and i think uh, and i always find that interesting because i was think okay if i've had a good experience and you ask me for review it's a good time I'm, i'll be yeah. completely amenable to that but it seems sometimes there's still that kind of like it still seems a little icky to ask for it yeah i guess that's everyone's personal uh com- comfort level with with the ask some people are like mm-hmm. hey great will you leave us a review if you don't feel comfortable asking a person then the next best is a text message so mm-hmm. text tends to work a little bit better than email um so sending like you know if you if you get the customer's cell number sending the the text is is really valuable like hey we'd really appreciate your feedback on our google listing here's a direct link to leave us a review uh or a re- a re- request an email is always it's pretty easy i think it takes mm-hmm. away some of that anxiety about the ask if you if you just send an email and you can automate that too there are software platforms we have one at white spark called uh, the reputation builder you can load up your customers we can connect to your crm and it auto sends the asks out for you via email or text and so that that's another way to go yeah um but obviously i mean when you do when you do the face-to-face ask it's got a little bit more weight behind it so it i'm does, especially if you give that card he'd be like the, you know would you leave me a review on google they say yeah of course yeah, i had a great experience awesome i'm gonna make it easy for you here's a card all you have to do is point your uh phone at the qr code on this card and i'll take you right to leave a review it's that's that's the best way to generate mm-hmm. lots of reviews what are some of the what are some of the would you say more creative or, or clever things that you've seen people do with, with their Google uh, business listing? Like, is it types of, you know, types of images they put up, types of insights they share about their business? What have you seen uh, uh, some of the the really creative ones that have worked? 
Yeah, there's one little trick that I discovered is that um, you'll 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 come across it once in a while. It's when there is a animated GIF in the product section, so you can actually have your products have a little animation which really draws attention. So it's a really creative and clever way to do it. And the way that you do it is Google will not accept a file upload for the product section if the extension is .gif. But if mm -hmm. you had an animated GIF, like you made it custom, and then you rename it to .jpg, then upload it, Google will accept it, and then in the search results, it actually shows the animation. So that's oh. a real creative way to make your listing stand out is with the animated GIFs. And then another really big one that a lot of businesses have no idea about is that Google has gotten extremely smart at interpreting the content of what's inside your images. There's this thing called Google Vision AI, mm. and you can upload images to it. It'll tell you what Google thinks is inside that image. It's like, this is a picture of smi a smiling family. Let's say it was like a, a photo on a dentist website. Right. This is a photo of a dentist. Now, if you can upload photos of a dentist in, in practice, then that's going to be more valuable for your listing if you're a dentist than a photo of a happy family. So it's almost mm -hmm. like creating keyword associations with your listing for with through your images. So uploading images uh, on a regular basis and images that reflect the product services, whatever it is that you are selling has a real positive impact on both conversions on your listing and it actually impacts ranking too. So this is a thing that a lot of people aren't aware of. And so there's great benefit to continually add photos to your Google listing. Yeah, no, that, that's a great piece of advice and one I'm sure most people weren't uh, weren't aware of because uh, as we said, I mean, sometimes people just throw up some stock images, sometimes yes. they throw up a few, you know, phone images or whatever, but without, I don't think many people, uh, as you just outlined, would align that to keywords either. So I think that's a fantastic, fantastic piece of advice. Um, are there other, any other any other little tricks or tips you have? Yeah, I hesitate to give this one, but uh, getting a keyword. <laughs> well, good. This sounds like a good one. <laughs> yeah, getting your keyword in your business name is probably, it's one of the most significant ranking boosters. So in, in Google, it's like, well, what's your business name? And you can type in your business name. And most people, let's say I'm Acme Plumbing, right? Acme mm -hmm. Plumbing. I put that in my, in my business name. Uh, now, if I want to rank for, let's say, Chicago Plumbers, and I made my business name Acme Plumbing Dash mm -hmm. Chicago Plumbers, that absolutely has an impact on rankings and you'll rank better for Chicago Plumbers because you have those keywords in the business name. Now, I, I hesitate to tell that tip because you can actually get your listing suspended. That's against Google's guidelines. You, you take a risk when you do that. Um, so the, the actual tip is to rebrand your business. We helped a business, mm -hmm. uh, one of our clients completely rebrand. So, you know, the business name was very kind of generic brand name before that didn't have the keywords in the name. So we helped them come up with a new brand name that had the keywords in the name. It had an overnight massive impact on their rankings. This is a multi-location brand. And so in, at scale, it had a huge impact. It's worth millions of dollars in additional revenue because they skyrocketed to the top of the local packs. So keywords in the business name in the Google business profile absolutely impact ranking, but do it at your own risk because you could potentially get your listing suspended. If you don't want to get your listing suspended, change your actual business name because you can't get suspended if it's your actual business name. Yeah, yeah, you know what's fascinating about that, uh, Darren, is the fact that you know once upon a time you'd sort of come up with your your business name and you maybe you go through a process and you go, oh, cool name for my business. But now what you're saying here is okay, maybe think a little bit more strategically and say yeah. how how does my how will my business name impact um, you know SEO and ranking and all of that. And I think that's an I think that's an incredibly important takeaway because I I guarantee you not many people know that. That's a, a, a in fact, I just learned something new myself. Thank you. Right. I think it, it applies for the local business that cares mm -hmm. to rank in the local packs. If you are that mm -hmm. e-commerce shoe company, you probably don't want to do that. You want to go with a, a better looking brand name. Um, but if you are going to actually do it, there is that, that financial benefit to rebranding. You have to do it everywhere. You have to do it on your logo, your website, the signage outside of your uh, building. Mm -hmm. You have, it's, it's, it's a job. You got to change your 
your your letterhead, your like you have to officially mm -hmm. rebrand and you change it with the Secretary of State. It's 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 a full rebrand. Otherwise, you still risk the risk your listing getting suspended. Right, right. Um, are there are is there any more things coming down the pike here from Google? That, any things that you're aware of that's going to change? Um, maybe enhancements to the Google business listings or their algorithms or anything that's coming uh, coming in the future that you're aware of or that you suspect might be coming. Yeah, well, they are pushing everyone to edit their listing in the search results rather than the Google business profile dashboard that hints at them trying to sunset that application. So you'll, you'll no longer manage your listings in the Google business profile dashboard. It becomes a problem for multi-location businesses. It's really hard to manage each of those in the search results. So that's a big one that they're pushing. Um, more ads, that, that's the sort of nonstop uh, path that Google is on. They're, they're just trying to sell more ads and, and they, they've built up their local product because they want to, there's a huge market of small local businesses that they would like to sell Google ads to. And so um, just continuing to refine that. Uh, another big one is, that's really coming is the ability to sync your products with your inventory so you could sell them right on your mm -hmm. Google listing. Mm -hmm. So any retail business or any business that sells actual products, we see a shift. They actually almost hinted at it uh, a few weeks ago. The product section disappeared and it says products are now being managed in Merchant Center which was very interesting, but then the next day it was reverted. So almost like they released it by accident. So really tying every business to a merchant center account where you can sell products and then Google gets a cut of those sales is definitely where they're heading. Right, yeah, that's really interesting. And yeah, and the advertising part, I mean, come on. Look, I mean, when you use Google as a search engine, now you you have to actually dig for the organic results because there's so yeah, much advertising definitely. on it right now. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's like seven seven paid results, and then you know, then your business. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, your if you're, if you're lucky, if you're yeah. lucky, yeah, yeah. And well, and that's a and that's that seems to be a trend too. I mean, if you look at Yelp, have gone the same direction as well, and yeah. and some other and some other things like even TripAdvisor. There's a lot of them have gone this direction, and unfortunately, it has taken away from the utility of of the original purpose of of these of some of these products. I think. Yeah, it does make you wonder when does Google ruin their search results so much with ads that an alternative, mm -hmm. a competitor actually starts gaining ground. That's an interesting yeah. idea. And there are interesting search engines like Neva, I think is one of them, where it's like you pay a monthly subscription for like, I don't know, it's like cheap, it's two bucks a month, but you have a ad-free search experience. So that mm -hmm. is an interesting model and it'll be interesting to see how over time, you know, if someone can uh, disrupt Google's absolute monopoly of search. Yeah, I mean, and if you think about it, I mean, that's the reason why the why a lot of people switch from cable and stuff to, you know, watching things on streaming because they're like, oh, no ads are on YouTube. Well, there was no ads. You can watch exactly. all this stuff. Now there's ads everywhere. Now it's exactly the same. It's just as irritating unless you pay a premium to have an ad free yep. experience. And so I do think. I do think that is going to become that's going to become more and more of an issue because I think people are just like over you know kind of sick of being just bombarded and when especially when they're yep. looking for something in particular. Paying for ad free is a, a growing monetization um, option that businesses are going with. You see it with Twitter. Twitter's got this new thing called Twitter Blue, where if you sign up for that for three fifty a month, then any news articles that you link to to any of their partners like washington post or whatever you can read as part of your twitter blue uh subscriptions mm -hmm. without the ad and without the paywall gating uh, another one is um uh like mobile apps so any apps you put on your phone like it's free but if like you want to get rid of the ads you got to pay for it right and so i just mm -hmm. really see that model growing and, and i think that there's an opportunity in search as well it's just like the these ones yeah, no, absolutely, and it'll be interesting to see what what impact that has, and as you said, who who emerges, um, you know, new competitors. Uh, okay, in in the last mo couple of moments we have here, what is there any other piece of advice that you'd like to give people around uh, around Google Business? Yeah, it's important for people to know that your your local rankings are impacted by your website and links coming into your website as well. So if we're talking about improving your local rankings, don't only focus on 
Google uh, business profile. You have to, you know, have to focus on that, get that optimized and, and well built out. You also have to get reviews and then your website itself needs to be really well built with content and properly optimized from an SEO, SEO perspective. So that's like optimizing the title tags with keywords, making sure your keywords appear in the text copy, having a page for every service, making sure that those pages have lots of content. Google likes to rank pages that are rich in content more than pages that have hardly any content because you got to mm -hmm. give Google something to chew on. So all of those things have a really big impact on your local pack rankings as well as your main rankings in the search results, the blue links. And so don't forget about your website. And then, of course, you need to drive links to your website as well. So getting other websites to link to your website is, is another huge uh, signal that will, you know, come together. All of those things come together, your local stuff and your website stuff to help your overall rankings. Yeah. Yeah. And, and actually we could, we could do a whole, uh, we could do a whole other section. I'm getting uh, backlinks and all of that to, uh, <laughs> to, to your website. So, um, but we'll Definitely. leave it here today, Darren, this is fantastic. All of Darren's information is going to be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a bit more about you and white spark. Yeah, sure. So uh, you can find uh, our products and services at whitespark.ca. We have all kinds of software and services to help you rank better in local. Um, and uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at, at Darren Shaw underscore. So, uh, and you can also look us up on YouTube. I've got a YouTube channel full of videos on how to uh, improve your uh, rankings in local search. Just look up Whitespark in YouTube and you'll find me there too. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, and I would totally encourage people to go and check it out because, um, I, as as you've know, have you seen from our discussion, like things change a lot. You know, there's there's things that you mightn't be fully aware of. I mean, you're head down in your business, especially your local business. I mean, you're head down. You've got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I would really encourage you to go check out check out whitespark.ca. Go check out the tools. And, uh, you know, and if you need to just get somebody to help you get yourself on the right track, because, uh, you know, a little bit of good advice and help early on can make a big difference in the long run. So listen, thanks yep. again, Darren. Uh, thank thanks you for having me. It was a pleasure chatting with you, John. Yeah, you too. And thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. See ya.